Hey, good morning YouTube. It's Jeffrey Hells Carpet Clean. We're here this morning out in beautiful uh, sunny Happy Valley. It's a nice dry winter's day. Um, we're probably going to be looking about maybe 60 degree temperature. It is sort of um, unseasonal this time of year. It's usually a lot wetter and a lot colder but right now we're probably looking at 65 degrees it feels like it doesn't feel much colder than that to me but uh, one thing we do especially when we're meeting a uh a client out in a job for a move in is that we always try to arrive about 15 minutes early and we kind of stage some of our stuff and get it ready and prepped and time ready to go there so we put our some of our equipment on the front porch verify the address to make sure we're at the right place and i also a lot of times these places put their water spigots in the uh in the garage um but in this case i look next door and i could see the the water right there on the side so i was like okay this is nice so i got one ahead ran our hose out and got it prepped and ready so now we're just waiting for the client to show up and let us in and then we will commence our cleaning process all right so i'm inside i've got our vacuum set up and ready to go but what i'm going to do right now because i haven't actually gone through the house yet i'm just going to go ahead and do a quick walk through looking for anything you know staining or anything may stand out typically that's what we do the uh the pre-vacuum that's what we're doing. So we're going around um, with these darker, uh, it's hard to tell if they're a brown or a beige carpeting. They are pretty dark. So these don't um, get the filtration lines or at least they're not noticeable like on white carpets. So I always just kind of look around in all the rooms to see, you know, in specifically what needs to be treated um, a lot of times a person uh, walking you know moving into a new home wants the carpets clean so that they're fresh and you don't know how long the, the house has been sitting on the market collecting dust so we go through we give it a real good thorough vacuum with a Kirby and then we give it a good steam clean and that's just to get everything off cleaned up nice ready to move in so far no stains nothing out of the ordinary oh and you guys um one thing i do is i use doors as a signal door openings we're cleaning we're working in there and then usually lights on mean that we're working and then lights off means that we've completed and for airflow purposes, we usually just leave any doors open that we've worked in. So, so far, one, two, three, four bedrooms. Closet, did I do that right? No, there's a restroom. One, two, three bedrooms, a hallway, a stairway, nothing. Here is abnormal, like I was saying about filtration lines. Um, typically, where they do occur is along this edge of the stairs, and as you can see, there is nothing just white wall with brown carpet up to it. So, in the downstairs area, we've got this living room slash dining room area. And it's pretty much wide open, easy clean, big box. So, again, no staining, no nothing. I don't smell any odors from animals. So, again, the Master Blend product will be, do absolutely wonderful. Um, one thing that I do use is a lot of peroxide. I like peroxide because it's very versatile um, product. Some people say, oh, you only use it uh, when the, the situation calls for it. But this thing is, is that uh, peroxide is so versatile. It treats anything from animals to odors to, to petroleum coming, some petroleum coming in from outside food. 
and all that. So, and in, in this case, we're probably not needed, but we're gonna use it anyways because uh, peroxide sterilizes, and so it just gets a little bit more clean, a little bit more bang for the buck. And we're talking like maybe doing six to eight, six to eight ounces of peroxide. Per gallon. Now this isn't just straight peroxide like you would get from a, a grocery store. However, if you were in a pinch, you could use grocery store peroxide. It pretty much does the same thing. However, the detonator product by back weighs roughly 25 to 30 percent um, peroxide. It's very highly concentrated in a gallon and it's like 22, 23 bucks. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, now, your peroxide at the grocery store, I think you buy them by the pint, and they might have them by the quart, and they're pretty cheap. They're under a buck, usually. And But the thing is, is that those are like 5%, the, the, the concentration of the peroxide is like 5%, and the rest of it's water. So you need to literally put in five times as much peroxide as what you would with the detonator stuff. So by the time you do the price calculations and comparisons, you'll find out that the grocery store stuff is probably more expensive. However, in a pinch situation, like I was saying, you can go ahead and multiply it by five and get a pretty decent dilution ratio. So where you're using one ounce of the detonator, you're needing to use five ounces of the grocery store stuff to get the same uh, dilution ratio going there. So anyways, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and begin our steam cleaning process. Um, it should be a very simple, straightforward, easy job today. All right, so I always like pointing out that the pre-vacuum is the number one overlooked thing by the carpet cleaning industry of cheap carpet cleaners is that they don't pre-vacuum. Now, these carpets here, the only dust that was, was in here was pretty much stuff floating around and settling while the house was sitting on the market. And whatever the previous carpet cleaner left in the carpets was pretty much the only stuff that was in here. However, just going through, you know, the one, two, three bedrooms, hallway, and the downstairs, I have another vacuum for vac hand vac that I use on the stairways, but that's besides the point. We filled up half a, pretty much half a Kirby bag of debris simply just by doing a pre-vacuum. So, you know, rather than just turning that all to mud during the steam cleaning process, I like just getting all that dust and stuff out of the carpets. And quite frankly, it's that that uh, abrasive debris is in the carpeting when it's walked upon. That's what's scratching and damaging the carpets. And the typical vacuum cleaner that the homeowner has, even though they say that they pre-vacuum their carpets, the Walmart special, you know, the $149 vacuum cleaner, yeah, will do a pretty good job at sucking uh, Cheerios up off the carpet, but that's about it. It does not get the debris that are buried deep in the carpet. So, without a good, strong commercial vacuum or a $3,000 Kirby, um, you really, there's just going to be so much debris in the carpets. And I feel, as a professional carpet cleaner, that my job is to maintain and increase the useful longevity of the carpet fibers to the best of my ability. So when I'm hired to come in and clean the carpets, I'm doing so with the, the mind that, you know, I'm going to make these carpets last longer because I'm pulling this debris out of the carpets that's not going to be damaging, you know, potentially damaging um, the fibers later on. So um, I, I try to give it that mindset and go on from there. So that is my purpose and my reason for the, the pre-vacuum. And I hope that you guys find a purpose and a reason for why you do things the way that you do. Don't just do them because so-and-so said so or because your buddy is using a particular 
brand cleaner that you're just going to follow suit, um, kind of have a, a purpose and a reason for it. Um, like one thing I tell people when they get started in the industry is that there really isn't a, a cleaner or a brand that's much better than everything else because they, come on, we're living in the, the 21st century. We've got science, we've got chemistry, we've got, you know, all this, this stuff at our disposal and all the products are more or less the same. Um, it really comes down to how you utilize them and which how you know how well you are able to use them is really what it comes down to and pretty much all the products work kind of slightly different from each other but they more or less all do the same thing so what i recommend to people is you know if you can find a local source find a local source and you know even though all your carpet cleaning buddies aren't using a particular product that's available at that source. You might uh, work a deal with the, the distributor there that might bring in the product that you want. Or just get accustomed to using the products that he carries because having that, um, that resource available to you is more costly than you know ordering stuff from john don's you know across the way so if that is a an option for you to, to do that i'd say go that route because then you've got like i said the the resource of the distributor so if you have questions or problems or anything like that um that guy is only a phone call away and because you're a customer of his he is going to be willing to take the time to help you out or at least any good uh, um, distributor or any good um, manager or whatever that they will invest time in their customers because they see the value in it so if you're the customer you've got a very good valuable resource so I, I just throw that out there as a little tip take it if you will if not discard it doesn't matter but uh um, that's pretty much what I did and the resource that I've gotten from from my my guy that I use I mean he's more or less been my mentor over the last 12 years or so and always put, points me in the right direction um, carries awesome products that I love using in fact he even brought in a new product line simply because you know, I was, when I started testing out Vacaway stuff, he carried very few Vacaway items. I think he had like one item on the shelf from Vacaway. And because of my interest in use and and results I was getting from Vacaway, he started carrying it in his store. Now he's got the full Vacaway line. Um, again, even with Vacaway, some of their products are better than others. Um, it's just kind of you know go through and test different stuff and learn as you go and that right there that experience is far more valuable than just taking someone's word for it and using it because that's what everybody else is doing so uh, that's my two cents worth for now and I'm going to go ahead and get our pre-sprayed treatment ready to go and get this puppy on the road so this brings us to our pre-spray process. It is the second phase or third phase of our cleaning process depending on how we're counting and how we're doing this. I'm going to call it our second phase or second and third phase because we're doing the pre-spray application and then we are following up with some agitation. So what this is here, this is a 3M multi-sprayer. So our cleaning so solution is made up and put into these uh, two gallon jugs and then I will use a little you know take it and spray it down um, generously you know not overdo it but enough that it covers the carpet very well and so what that's doing is this is what causes the suspension of the soils and what accelerates the suspension of the soils is the agitation 
Now you have mechanical mechanical agitation and manual agitation, and mechanical agitation is a lot better. But in this situation, where the the carpeting is somewhat fresh and new and in very good condition, and probably most likely under warranty and all that for a number of years, um, what we are going to do is we are going to use our manual agitation using our grande groom because. I feel personally that it doesn't warrant the extra agitation from mechanical. So guys that go in and do their pad cleaning, they're like, oh yeah, 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 this is the best way to do it. But, you know, however, I feel that it's just too much aggressive um, agitation involved in that. And, you know, if this was a rental house or something where you're needing to restore the carpets... And in these, we're not dealing with a restorative nature or a cleaning process. We're just going through and giving it a freshen up. So I don't see the, the, the need or the justification for using a scrub method for cleaning the carpets. Um, even running a CRB is not what I would justify it in this situation. And that's my opinion. Um... Maybe a little bit because you can see some darkening there in the carpeting, but that will probably just come out fine with our pre-spray and hot water extraction. So even that I don't really see necessary to be running a, a C every year across it. So that's that. Um, do what you feel is necessary to get the job done, but make sure that you do it with reason and intent. Know why you're doing it. Study why you're doing it the way you do it. And make your decisions based upon that rather than um, watching a YouTube video. Okay, so I didn't notice this until we started our pre-spray process. And what this is, this is actually a replaced piece of carpet here. You can see it's been cut out and patched in there. However, I don't know if that's staining or what is actually on there. So... Um, <clears throat> with that in mind, that, uh, kind of, just kind of, like, pops out and starts spinning the wheels in my head and what I'm going to do here. Hey, and one thing I wanted to say about, um, the products all being this more or less the same, um, they are, but they aren't, because you got this quality level. The cheaper your products that you get, sure, they're going to clean and make the carpets look good, but they also contain higher concentrations of residual soap residues that are going to be left behind during the cleaning process and those residual soap residues sticky stuff being left in the carpet is what attributes soil accumulation and quickly um resoiling carpets so um just because it's cheap or inexpensive doesn't mean it's any good you really need to go out there and test the product now, one thing I do want to preface and say is don't believe a word I say. I'm just a man. Um, I, I live by experience. So you need to go out and experience and test things yourself to come up with your own opinions. Um, another thing that I do, um, the reason I use a soapless product and the peroxide um, is because, you know, there is no residual soap residue on that. It neutralizes everything that's in the carpets. And at the same time, there is no need to use a fiber rinse when you're, when you're doing that because your product is pretty much neutralizing and rebalancing the, the pH in the carpet and pulling the residues out and obliterating them. So, um, I went out, I tested this stuff. The, the soapless stuff and it seems to work really well and the reason why I've gone this route is so that I do not have to use a fiber rinse now I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to jump on the bandwagon and rail me for doing stuff that way but again it goes back to experience and, and just testing and figuring out all these things for yourself because um, I, I use the example of the look good when you go to church. Everybody is happy and smiling, um, despite the fact that so and so Smith family just 
had a divorce and blah, blah, blah. But hey, at church, they're all happy and everything's perfect and wonderful and life is all a bunch of bowl of Cheerios and even though things are falling apart at home. And so that same fake facade happens in the carpet cleaning industry. I see it all the time. People lying about how much money they make and just making up stories on how many jobs they get, um, the type of advertising they do. So um, really, you guys, just keep it safe and keep it real. Keep it honest. Nobody really cares. I mean, we're all in this to help each other out and to help strengthen each other and anything I can do to to help um, I'm more than honored to be able to do that but again like I said don't take my word for anything don't believe me go out and research the stuff yourself um, I had a bunch of people making fun of me because I said that uh, peroxide is a natural deodorizer and that it acts as a reducer and a um, gosh one of the terms when it adds oxi oxidizer and a reducer and you know I, I got a lot of slack for that until you know I, I cited my source for why I said that and then they're like oh we're wrong we're stupid we should have done some research so you know I'm not always right but I, I try to research and do everything that I do with a purpose and a, a reason and intent and I believe that that's what makes a person professional is actually having a reason and um, an understanding for why they do certain things the way that they do and a quick tip that you guys can use that I've been using and it works pretty well actually um, this was just something that I just started doing um, I'm sure that, you know, there are other guys who do the exact same thing. There's probably YouTube videos of people doing this. But uh, one thing that you can do when you're working with a granule product is that a lot of times I find it very, very convenient just to, to pre-pour the stuff into plastic baggies so it, they're there and ready to go. But then this baggie also kind of doubles over as a funnel, so I can use that, you know, you know, pour it from one end so it all comes out evenly to get it into the container. And it works very well. It doesn't make any mess at all if you're, if you're careful. And it's very neat and convenient. And it's already pre-measured. So it's kind of a, a no-brainer and it works very well. Um, this is another one of those things that guys are going to laugh at you. But <laughs> if it works, hey, why not use it? So I'm just throwing that out there, something you can use or not use. All right, so now I'm prepping the stairways for soil suspension. And what I do in this process is I go ahead and I pre-spray the, the, car, the, uh, the stairs with the same product that I use throughout the rest of the house. But as I go along, I'm also looking for spots and stains and things in the carpet. And then I'm using that, this uh, basically a $3 scrub brush. Um, I, I clean them regularly just to get some good agitation in there. And um, the last job I, that I did had wool, so there was a lot, a lot of wool fiber in there. And once the wool fiber gets in there, you pretty much can't get it out. So um, if you take another brush and and comb the combs through each other you might be able to get you know a bit more out but the stuff that's buried deep in there you ain't getting out so it's three bucks you can just go buy another one and then junk that one but anyways that's what we're going to be doing the process going down the stairs and once the soil suspension is down the stairways i'm going to go ahead and fire up our truck and bring our uh, hoses and lines in and go ahead and begin the steam cleaning process um yeah, I like doing the stairways um, as I come down the stairs anyways. So I have the stair tool there. I used to always use an upholstery tool, but the stair tool is actually faster. Um, it's a little more difficult and more inconvenient when you're doing the risers. I don't know how many of you guys actually do the risers on the, the back of the step, but I do. Um, so I try to get the, the stairways done as thoroughly as possible. And that without a, like a swivel head on your, your stair tool, it makes it a, a bit more difficult. But um, in the meantime, I'm just going to 
you know, put up with it until I can afford to buy some better equipment or rather than afford um, until I actually do justify buying some new equipment. So, I mean, for now, what I've got works, works fine. You just have to, uh, to make it work. So, anyways, that's the process here and that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so we've got all of our hoses and lines running in. The uh, wand is hooked up, ready to go. We're just letting the truck run a little bit for job of the day. Let the uh, kind of heat up a little bit, cold start. Takes a few minutes. Um, yeah, there you have it. We're So basically we did our pre-vacuum, we did our pre-spray, we agitated. Now we are, we've allowed some dwell time as we ran our lines and things into the house, fired up the truck, getting it ready. And now we are going to finish with a uh, extraction, hot water extraction, steam cleaning. But we're also going to do a double dry pass just to make sure we get up as much moisture as we possibly can. And with that double dry pass, you're also pulling up not only more moisture, but you're also pulling up more uh, debris that are... Uh, accumulated down the carpet fiber so um, it's more than just for the purpose of allowing it to dry more quickly it also um, has a purpose of getting the carpets more thoroughly cleaned and rinsed out and then when that's said and done we are going to go ahead and go back and do a final grooming with the Grundy groom because what that'll do is that will actually dig channels into the carpets as you can kind of see how I don't know if you can see those grooves or anything, kind of how the, you can almost like see those line, perpendicular lines from the wall there, running through there. That was when we uh, groomed the carpets with our, there, that, that's pretty evident there. But anyways, that was due to run the grinding groom when we did the pre-spray and it helps to uh, get that pre-spray in evenly throughout all the carpet fibers and everything. But in the sake of the, the groom out when we're done, what that does is that it not only removes our footprints and the lines left by the, the steam cleaning wand, it also is grooving or digging those channels or grooves into the carpets so that it allows for maximum airflow. So air is allowed to, the carpets breathe more easily at that point and allow them to dry more quickly. So, um, just another trick learned along the way and try to pass that on to you guys who are starting out in the business. That's the reason why a carpet cleaner will groom the carpets when he's done. Um, again, not all of them actually do. So I'm sure some of them don't even have a grande groom available for them to use. But uh, that's the reason I use it. And if you do the research, do a little Google search you know, the grande groom and all that, you'll find out that um, it will decrease dry time by roughly 7 to 10%, I believe, um, was the number that I remember the last time I was doing the, the research on that a few years ago. Um, it may have changed by now, who knows, you know, as we move from nylon to polyester, maybe it, it, there's another dry time that they're using now, I don't know. But anyways, um, at that time, 90, or I'd say it's about 70% of all the carpets were nylon. Now it's kind of flip-flopped where about 70% of the carpets are polyester. Um, in here, I believe this is nylon. I believe this is nylon. I, I didn't do a, I didn't do a, a fiber, uh, fiber test to find out exactly what it is. I pretty much use the same product cleaning all types of carpets. Um, encapsulation works great on nylon carpets and it's awesome on polyester as well because it breaks that surface tension that is needed because of the, the oil absorbing, uh, absorbing nature of polyester. Um, it allows the, uh, the encapsulation products to, to work better in those situations. So. It's kind of a, a double-edged sword. You get to use it in both situations. Anyways, I am going to go ahead and get going with the steam cleaning process here and uh, show you some results as we finish up.
Hey, whatever that was that was right there on that patch out, cut out piece of carpet came right out. Um, did a really good job. All we did was just rinse with water and use our uh, solution that we put down and it seemed to uh, get rid of it. Hey, master bedroom actually came out pretty nice. However, you can still see the indentation from where the bed was there. And that is in the carpet pattern. That's nothing to do with the carpet. And in some cases, if you take a steamer and just apply a bunch of steam directly down in those areas, it will cause the uh, the the pouting to expand a bit and take out some of those dents. Um, however, it's more likely you can get these dents out rather than the bed. Um, at least from my experience, it's. You have better luck with like bookshelves and furniture than you do with with bed dents, and I don't know if it has to do with the weight or really what it does. It probably has more to do with the uh, how the weight is distributed. But anyways, yeah, looking really good. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and head on downstairs and finish up the uh, family room, dining room area, and then I'll finish up the stairway. Um, originally I was going to finish off with the stairway first and then do the front room, but I think I'm going to reverse that so I don't have to keep swapping tools out. Alright you guys, I'm coming down the stairs with the stair tool. So what I do on this is I release uh, quite a bit of water. Well, anyways, can't really do it and hold the camera at the same time. But I spray quite a bit of water along that bull nose. And after I, I do the, then I do the risers next. I turn this around. Like so. And get them like that. And I'll do a dry pass with it like that as well. Then I do the, the step part. And then I uh, detach the hose from our tool and I go ahead and I vacuum across that bull nose to pick up any uh, moisture that's lying there. And it does a really good job and it looks great. Um, customers really appreciate it. And um, as far as I know, it's, it's just as thorough as uh, Brown's professional carpet cleaning. I love the way that he does his stairs. In fact, um, I do them that way occasionally from time to time using my upholstery tool, but the stair tool is most times is a lot faster, more convenient, and um, in tighter corners I'll like to use the upholstery tool because this thing does get in the way in tight corners, but as far as just speeding through the stairs, it does a really good job and it's very thorough as well. Hey Jeffrey, Howell's Carpet Clean. We're out in southeast Portland down. We go from uh, pretty much Vancouver all the way down to Wilsonville. So you got some uh, carpets that need some cleaning, go ahead and feel free to call me personally directly 503-939-0534. And if you have, and the same goes to any questions if you have regarding carpet cleaning with your business, any ideas or tips, I'd be glad to uh, throw you what little I know and have experienced over the years and, you know, what I've gleamed off of other people. So anyways, again, Jeffrey Howells Carpet Cleaning. Have an awesome day, you guys, and keep cleaning those carpets.